Crouch is the first real river you encounter on leaving the Thames. The entrance is guarded by 25,000 acres of sand and silt called Foulness. It's just visible here on Google and you can see it easily at low tide and it still catches the odd unwary yachtsman. There but for the grace of God. At one time there was a plan to put a seawall around the sandbank and use it as London's third airport. Stansted won that time, but London will one day need yet another airport and the fate of Foulness Sand will be reconsidered. Further up the river, Google reveals how man has sought to control the crouch with banks and dikes and special one-way drains. The land behind the walls is well below spring high tide level and will be flooded when the river wins, as it does at some stage during most centuries. The last was in 1953. There are so many fascinating geographical parallels with New Orleans. Draw your own conclusions about the wisdom of building cities below sea level. The island of Foulness is even more odd. It's run and operated by arms developer Kinetic. The confusingly spelt name is all part of the espionage game. The entrance to the Crouch is guarded by what is marked on the chart as the Twin Tower Target. Now it starts to make sense. And every hour or so through the working day, they'll let off a bang of some description. Or clusters of bangs. But of course, we don't use those anymore, do we? Every now and again, there's a bang that's big enough not only to hear, but to feel through the hull of the boat. There, did you hear that? Birds didn't react at all. They're reacting to me. They're flying off because of me, not because of the bangs. The Crouch has a little sister called the Roach. It curls away past the landing stage at Pagglesham, great name, towards Rochford, which as any amateur etymologist will be all too pleased to tell you, is obviously a good place at which to ford the Roach. The confluence of the two rivers is a superb place to race dayboats. strong tides do some pretty crazy things, so winning isn't about boat speed. It's local knowledge, raw cunning and nerves of steel that count as whole fleets of yachts fight to stay out of the tide. I spent my first night on the Roach and the next morning watched the dayboat fleet as it beat against the tide, competing for possession of the shallow water. Nice chunky wooden boats are Royal Burnham One designs. They're said to be the most comfortable day boats ever built. And look at how at ease this lot are. Four up, well, four down anyway, and everyone looking comfortable. The sailors do seem to take a remarkably relaxed attitude towards racing. Then comes the difficult decision of when to make the break across the channel to fetch a mark that's both upwind and upstream. The less attractive, pointier wooden boats are Royal Corinthian One designs. Imports from cows, not designed for Essex at all. 